Hey, I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas. I arrived today and I am uh, going over my presentation for tomorrow and I could actually use use a little help and some advice. I'm, I'm mostly ready, but uh, I thought I it would be a good way to review what I'm doing tomorrow by showing you. So the workshop is for the Arkansas Transition Services. So uh, most educators coming tomorrow, I think we have about 25, will be special educators with a high school focus. And uh, so, let's see, they even have a little little flyer there. Oh, there I am. And the, the focus is, or it's called Do-It-Yourself Study Aids Winning Websites and Apps. And I've presented this before, and I'm always refreshing and trying to find better tools. So I hope that maybe you have some suggestions for me as uh, we go through because I can certainly add and change things. Uh, this is just my keynote here and of course I introduce myself. Uh, <laughs> I found uh, some pictures of when I was a kid uh, just uh, the other weekend and I thought this was funny. Um, I've always been a little geeky. I'm not sure the year on this picture but um, if you look at the at the cake very closely there is a computer on there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's always always been I guess something I've been interested in there there's a there's that cake again and then it was like another birthday and another computer cake I guess it was a thing when I was a kid <laughs> uh, but <clears throat> when we talk about making our own study aids I think about all the things that kids make as uh, little board games and and such and I loved making those as a kid and there's certainly value in making them paper but we have uh, digital ways of doing things too uh, this is just a little video of a, a Google search when you look up electrical quiz board and I loved making these as a kid too uh, you connect the the wires and if the light lights up you know you got it correct uh, so really everything goes around this uh, dear Tony letter uh, from I want to learn and uh, I want to says uh, I'm having trouble studying what advice do you have for me and for the workshop we'll do a little introduction and uh, this is cool using keynote I have a built-in timer so here I'll go into play mode and I just click and I have a timer right on my slide I bought this several years ago I think it's keynote countdown timers or something but it's really just a movie that plays on my slide but it's handy because I can have instructions on the screen and uh, a timer going so it's all all right there yeah so see this is just a video and I could I could trim it and uh, and change it if I wanted to but my suggestion obviously for the day since our theme is games will be games uh, and if I wasn't a teacher, I always wanted to be a game show host, so this is right up my alley. Uh, in the classroom, I hosted Who Wants to Be a Winner? Because, of course, I didn't have a, a million dollars to give away. And I loved hosting game shows as a fifth grade teacher. Uh, I even had a, a disco ball that I'd get out for, for these special occasions. It was fun. But my workshop tomorrow in Little Rock will be really focus on apps, web-based and, and iPad-based apps that students can use to make their own study aids, whether they're games or flashcards. But what I really want to show teachers are things that students can put their own content in and then use it to study. So um, some of our objectives tomorrow will be really to be inspired to bring games into the classroom, use a variety of websites, and choose at least one tool you'll use right away in the school year. So um, anybody who, who comes to one of my workshops always gets a sticker. I bought this sticker printer years ago and it's handy to put a QR code on it. Let's see, here's my, my, my pile of stickers for uh, tomorrow. I still have to update the website tonight, so if you happen to go there, um, it's It'll, it needs a little bit of an update, but it, it's, it's pretty much ready. Uh, so what I like to do with teachers is give them a chunk, demonstrate a few different websites, and then give them uh, a chunk of time to work on ones of their choosing. 
That way, if they are already familiar with a site or it just doesn't appeal to them, they can work on a different one. So our first group uh, that I'll go through is, is it starts pretty simple, and that would be crosswordlabs.com and quizlet.com and goconquer.com. And I have some examples that we'll do live, and then I will send out a link to uh, everybody in the workshop so they can try it themselves. Uh, and seeing how playing somebody else's puzzle is like, what that's like, and then uh, diving into making their own. Crossword Labs is, is pretty easy, where you just put on each line the word and then the definition, and then you can generate a crossword, like, really easily. It, it could be a PDF that you print, but you can fill it out right online. So every time you make a crossword, you get a URL that goes right to it. Um, so a, a big idea that I'm sharing tomorrow is that really making your own study aids aids in your studying. The, the person doing the most work is probably the person doing the most learning. So uh, in, the, in the classroom, I, I remember as a new teacher, I was making all these great study guides and aids for my students, and I was learning the fifth grade curriculum so well, but I was spoon feeding my students. Uh, later on, I realized that having my students make their their learning aids and and make what they could for their learning was, was far more effective. So we'll look at Quizlet. A lot of people are familiar with Quizlet, but if anybody tomorrow in my workshop is not, they'll be really happy that they found it. It's like YouTube for flashcards, but you can visualize the flashcards in different ways, so that's nice. But the best part is that students could go in there and make their own flashcards and use that as a way to study. So I have a few things on Quizlet there. Uh, I really like uh, in the iPad app, they've, they've updated it. Oh, not super recently anymore, but it used to be hard to do the scatter. And now it's more like a matching game on an iPad even. And that's been one of the challenges of planning this workshop and really any others is that when teachers come to them, some have Chromebooks, some have iPads, some just have smartphones, some have Mac, some have Windows, uh, Android, Amazon Fire. And so trying to find things that could work on just about everything is, is what I've been trying to do, but sometimes I'm not successful. But Quizlet is one that works just about everywhere. Uh, there is a plus and a teacher version if you wanted to pay a little bit more. I love that the fees are affordable, $15 a year or $25 a year. That's pretty nice. Then there's Go Conquer, which is really similar to Quizlet. It just changes it up a little bit. The flashcards are a little flashier. This used to be called Exam Time, and I think Exam Time is a much better name than Go Conquer. I don't know if, what the story is behind that, <laughs> but uh, I'll build an example one that I have in my, in my notes here. I'll do one with the state abbreviations. In, when I was in high school and had a part-time job in Omaha, I had to memorize all the two-letter state abbreviations because it was a telemarketing job. <laughs> there were a lot of those in Omaha. And you'd, you'd, they would quiz you and you had to know these two-letter abbreviations. So yeah, I thought that would be one to, to show and go conquer. And then the teachers get that chunk of time to decide which of these three they want to do. And then you can see I have my handy timer on here. I think 20 minutes will be good for that. Um, and then I just start and if they, this will be what's on the screen. Then uh, this is fun. I incorporate this a lot. I have some quick tips. So when I play it, it even has its own theme music. <laughs> just as a way to make it a little special. And uh, my, my quick tip will be to use any kind of drawing app, any kind of collage or imaging app, and make something that you can make your desktop or lock screen wallpaper. Uh, whether it's something that you want to study, or a schedule that you want to uh, refer to often, uh, or something you want to remember. 
If you make that your wallpaper uh, on your lock screen, you see it every time you reach for your device. So it's something that uh, will stick with you. And then that, then I'll play this again. And that was a quick tip. <laughs> so anyway, it's, tips are better with music. Uh, <laughs> after our break time, we'll um, <clears throat> talk about something called the Ikea effect, which there's a study where, <laughs> in fact, I've done a study on this, where people who uh, construct their own things uh, or had a, a hand in constructing it, value it more. And, and that's something we know as teachers, but building your own stuff build, builds feeling of pride and competence and of ownership. Um, just to encourage people tomorrow that, yeah, there's a lot of value in students making their own. So this is, this is the part where uh, I could use some of your help. And I have some time for teachers to choose some game makers. And I know everything else I showed was kind of a game maker too, but these are game makers in particular. Zondel.com is one where uh, you put in some content and then you can play it in like, I don't know, like two dozen different kinds of games that you can play. You get a question right and you get to open the egg. Get a question right, you get to fire a cannon. And uh, there's something similar to uh, classtools.net has just the same, it's very similar, where you put in some uh, information and then you can visualize that as a different kind of game. So my, so my theme for this section are really game makers. You, you put in content and then it can turn it into a game. So does so anybody watching have any other uh, ideas of what I might include in this section? I got, I got one heart, so that's good. <laughs> well, if you think of something, uh, put it put it in the uh, comments because uh, I've got I've got a couple question marks in there. And I have some ideas. I might include hey, now Kahoot. That's a great idea, and I have that as as the end as some whole class games. Uh, you know, as now as you say that, it, I could move that to this spot. Um, I wanted. Yeah, you got, you got me thinking now. <laughs> so maybe I'm going to write that down on my little hotel notepad here, possibly Kahoot in this spot. I had been saving it to the end as a review of all the things that we that we learn uh, tomorrow. Um, some of the things I, I was looking at uh, tiny tap. Um, Tiny Tap, you can make these little games. It, it seems like they're more elementary, and so it's going to be more high schoolish uh, teachers tomorrow. This may not be the best, but um, Tiny Tap. <laughs> Bucket list got me thinking. <laughs> um, Tiny Tap, you have to create on an iOS or Android device, but you can play on the web or any other kind of device, and there's, you can make up these little quizzes. You can bring in your own images to do it. So um, I think Tiny Tap might make my list for uh, for this. I just, the teachers coming tomorrow, some might just have a Chromebook and that's it. Though I guess chances are they might have a smartphone they could load the, the Tiny Tap app on. I just wish you could create in the browser too. Then uh, this would be great. The thing I was thinking of including was Jeopardy Rocks. This one's Jeopardy.rocks, not JeopardyRocks.com. Jeopardy.rocks instead of .com. It's like a, a new top-level domain name. But this one, you can you can build it a game in minutes and um, kind of a Jeopardy-style game. That still kind of goes what I'm with what I'm doing at the end of the day, which are like whole class games. Still, students could create a game and then have their teacher or classmates or parents uh, play it. Uh, that's a possibility here, kind of like Kahoot possibly going in this spot. Um, so th those are those are the two possibilities I have open in my <laughs> web browser right now to possibly put there. So any other ideas? I'd love to hear them. Then um, <laughs> there are some neat videos here from the fun theory. Uh, in this video, there's, there's really no sound here. 
Uh, somebody said, my Periscope is limiting people. Can't give hearts. You know what? I think I might have accidentally left my Periscope on that people can't, only people I follow can comment. That I was messing with it and I didn't mean to start it that way. That's probably why I'm not getting as many comments as I thought. <laughs> um, feel free to, I know, feel free to tweet me too if you have ideas. So I, I'm really glad that um, I saw that tweet. Um, so anyway, the, the fun theory is kind of taking things that are kind of boring or every day and making them a little more exciting. So uh, here they just made musical steps and it made people take the steps instead of the escalator. <laughs> and my, my point here, and I, I've, I, I've used these videos before, but I saw Corey Araza do this at Tech Camp last week is is that really it's about making something that might be boring exciting <laughs> and so you know there are things that we got to study things that students are going to have to know and that's why using games can be helpful um there's another one where they they make this trash can and they rig it that when you throw something in there it sounds like it drops for a really long time so they call it a, a bottomless garbage can <laughs> And they rig it out so when you throw something in there, it just sounds like it's going a really, really long way. <laughs> so, again, an example of, you know, make something that might be boring, exciting. Then the afternoon, I, um, I'll talk about my app, Stick Around, because obviously there's some game making there. The limitation is, again, it, it Chromebook people can't use it. It's an iPad-only thing, um, laptop people. So... Um, then stick around has there's kind of two apps that are very similar and so in the afternoon oh I see uh, making vocabulary spelling city games that could be an idea that's a good idea I'm writing writing that down on my hotel pad and paper spelling city that could go on my question mark thank you um, anyway with brain rush you can have a upload an image and then have hotspots so students match. You can also have, I put sequencing, put uh, words in, in a certain order, uh, and they, they call it adaptive learning games because uh, the, uh, it, it, you get something wrong and that question comes back to taunt you again and again. And similar to that is purpose games. And purpose games just are they're in a new beta and so this screenshots outdated I, I have to replace it it works on an iPad now and it, it didn't before and so it's similar you upload an image and then you put hot spots on there and you see how fast you can match everything up it doesn't have the adaptive part like brain rush but sometimes that, that adaptive this you get the same questions over and over again gets monotonous so Purpose games, I think, is great, and they're really easy to design, to upload and design. So I really like that too. Then um, at the end, we'll we'll do a Kahoot and a quizzes. Um, quizzes, there's two Z's at the end of quizzes, is really similar to Kahoot. I mean, look, even the website looks like Kahoot's website, but instead of the whole class doing it at the exact same time and students having to look at their device and look at the screen and to be able to answer. This one has everything on the student's screen. Um, the, the question, the picture, the responses, and everybody doesn't have to do it at the exact same time, but it still compares all the scores. So that's kind of neat too. And then um, I'll end with Sketch Party TV, and I'll, I'll play this, but I won't have the audio. With Sketch Party TV, you can use an Apple TV or connected, um, yeah, I'm not blocking anybody on Periscope. I haven't, I haven't blocked a single person. I just started this Periscope with the wrong setting. <laughs> and I need to, just need to, to follow more people too, but I'm going to turn this setting off for my next Periscope. Um, because it's, it's awful that only a couple people can give me hearts. That's, that's sad. It's the whole reason I do this, right? <laughs> uh, so um, with Sketch Party TV, this is the most fun I've ever had with my family. It's a great way to review vocabulary, is you put in words and then it um, shows the person on the iPad what they're supposed to draw. Everybody else looks up at the screen. 
and it keeps points and up on the screen obviously it doesn't give you the hint of what you're supposed to do or what the word is hey hey hi george uh thanks for dropping by so so that's sketch party tv we'll play a little bit of that and then at at the end we like I think our day will go by fast. It's just nine to three tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> and before the evaluation, sometimes I like to show this slide and uh, it's funny. It says, you know, anything else you want to say? And this is not, this is not one that my students have said. This is just from the internet. But if I had one hour to live, I'd spend it in this class because it feels like an eternity. <laughs> Hopefully the teachers in my workshop tomorrow won't feel that way, but it's always kind of funny to, to put there. <laughs> Oh, Gene, you're able to give hearts, but um, but not comment. Okay, that's good. At least at least there are hearts there. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> so so that's kind of my plan for tomorrow. Um, again, I know some of you can't comment because I have the wrong setting on this on this periscope, but. Uh, <laughs> okay, there you go. Thanks for all those, those hearts and reading the, the Twitter messages coming through since I, again, had that had that wrong setting on there. Um, any other websites that, that you know of, send them my way that, that you can make your own study aids. This has been um, it's something I've been keeping track and bookmarking sites. I'm always on the lookout because that's really where Stick Around came from, my app, is that I want students to be able to build their own stuff and learn while and after doing it. Um, I'll show you, I'll end here real quick with, with why I have the wrong setting on my Periscope. <laughs> um, I've, I've spent a few hours, actually several hours, making this infographic. So if you go to learninginhand.com, you can see it, and it's about Periscope. And I was telling people how they could limit comments, and to test it out, I had pressed the button, and I forgot to not press it. But at learninginhand.com, it's just an infographic called The Scoop on Periscope. And it has some of the basics, but um, what I think is probably the best part of this whole thing it, are my tips at the end for possibly using a microphone, where to keep the focus on the screen. I might do a whole other Periscope just on, on this. because um, I. If you know me, I love making infographics and I love the noun project. That's where I get all of these icons that you see. They're, they're uh, really uh, great, yeah. All right, so again, if you uh, come across any, find me on Twitter or at learninginhand.com. Uh, so thanks for joining me and I'll see you later.